Hi, I'm Dennis Atchison. It's April 15th, 2022. This is an episode of As I See It. On April 20th, five days from now, there'll be an important meeting just outside Fredericton on the proposed expansion of the Myra Quarry. The meeting will be held at the Douglas Baptist Church on Route 105, and it starts at 6.30. People will be given a chance to speak and their views about the impact of the quarry on their community. You should know that there's a few thousand homes that live west of the quarry area, and there's a few hundred homes that live east of the quarry area that have been impacted by that quarry since 2014. You should also know that the approval process for the Myra Quarry initially was pushed through very, very quickly. And it did not have to meet any environmental protection regulations and a few other regulations. You should also know that two or three years later, a competitor applied for a permit to put a quarry in right beside the existing one. The Spring Hill Quarry was denied the opportunity to build. And the denial came from then Minister Serge Roussel on a variety of points, including cumulative effects of increased dust, noise, and traffic in an already subjected area, impacts on well water, groundwater, runoff, structural impacts to buildings in that area, impacts on water courses and wetlands, impacts on turtle habitat, and impacts on several species at risk in that area. So the first question emerges, how is it Myra got through so quickly? And how is it Spring Hill, two years later, were not able to because of the very things that Myra didn't have to account for? Now, four years later, Myra's looking to expand and the question emerges, will they continue to be able to carry on their business as usual? And will the community have to continue to live with the consequences of the government's decision? Similarly, for the government, how is it they can approve one and reject the other? That's a real mystery we have not been able to find the answer to yet. So now let's go back to that earthquake. So it happened on the 13th, two, three days ago. And here's the magnitude of it, 2.1. And it shows that it had a zero kilometer depth. And there's your lang longitude and latitude. So I went down Google Maps. And when you right click on it, it'll give you the longitude and latitude and found the exact spot where the um, earthquake occurred. And it should be noted that the earthquake occurred at the exact same time as blasting was occurring at the Myra Quarry. So look for the red star on the left and you can see how we pull back a little bit each time. And you'll see where the blast occurred, where the quarry is in the upper right corner and where Cloudy Road is and where Town is. And we pull back a little bit further. And now you can see where the quarry is on the left, which looks like, um, like a baseball diamond from the sky. You can see the golf course on the left. You can see where the blast occurred, where the red star is. You can see the, uh, the Royal Road route into Fredericton from the west. And you can begin to see where the edges of uh, all the housing is for Fredericton. And pull back one more time and you can see how close that blast and earthquake was to Fredericton proper on its north side. So the meeting on the 20th has to deal with all those elements. The blasting, potential for earthquake, tons and tons of rock removal. Here's a comparative chart. Now it uses coal and it's only 8 million tons but there's going to be upwards over a 20 year period of near 900 million tons of rock pulled from that area. The real question is, do people have a voice in what happens in their community? The Myra Quarry somehow got a yes from the government with no community support. Spring Hill didn't get approval from the government because of community protest. Will Myra be able to expand, continue its massive impact on the people in the area, devaluing their properties, spoiling the air quality, 
spoiling the water quality, impacting environmental protected areas and watersheds? Or will this meeting on the 20th actually allow the people in the community to have a say? But it's important to note from Mr. Paul Jordan, who's managing all of this on behalf of the government, where he says, the purpose of the meeting is for the public to receive information on what is being proposed and provide their comments and ask questions. But each person is only given five minutes and there's no agenda passed out and there's no method for how you sign up to be a speaker. He makes a point of saying this is an opportunity for the public to ensure their comments are provided to the minister for consideration. All by itself, you know what the outcome is going to be just by that phrase. So what's the point of this as I see it? It's about process. It's clear from the behavior in the past that there is little accountability and transparency in the decision-making process on a quarry going into the backyard of a community. And now it's going to get bigger, more powerful, and cause more damage. How does a community gain authority over itself? How do they make government accountable for its decisions? And all of that is a piece of the meeting on the 20th. Ultimately, it's going to be about trust. Can the community trust the decisions being made are in the community's best interest? Is there a chance for everyone to have a voice? Not just be considered, but have a legitimate voice. And in the end, you have to ask another question. What kind of province do you want to live in?